Hey you guys, it's Britt. Today we're here with a little bit of a different video than what I've been uploading recently. I want to talk about five things that are worth spending money on and we're just going to switch it up. So I have my top five. If you're interested, please keep watching. Alright you guys, so this video won't be very long, but I've had it on my list for a little while. You know, so often I talk about stuff that's not worth the money, I don't like this, I don't like that, so for all of y'all that were asking for something positive, um, here you go. But let's just start at the top. So the very first thing that I thought about, obviously I, you know, think of my dog first, but investing in pet insurance. If you are, and obviously with all of these things, this is a, if you're in the financial position to do so conversation, I understand that money is really hard. Everyone has bills and expenses and all of that. There was a point in time where we were not making enough to even own a dog, but time goes on and I hope for everybody that some of the financial burdens end up, you know, getting better because it sucks to struggle. I know exactly what it feels like, but pet insurance, do your homework, talk to your own vet before you invest in pet insurance. There's so many different companies that offer pet insurance depending on your pet, your, uh, the age of the pet if they have health complications, are there pre-existing conditions? Are they prone to have more medical issues than maybe another pet would? Lots of things go into considering, you know, what company do I go with? What plan do I go with? So I'm saying maybe do a consultation with your vet next time you're there or somebody in the office who is well-versed in pet insurance and the way that it works and see if they can help guide you through that process. With pet insurance, for me personally, it's a peace of mind thing. It's a, God forbid, knock on wood, if anything were to ever happen where, you know, we didn't see it coming, just out of the blue kind of situation, at least the pet insurance is there if we need to use it. And I understand it's like, well, you know, I'm paying this monthly premium or annual premium or however your plan goes, and I'm not using it. But for me, I don't mind paying a fee for having peace of mind and knowing that if it was ever needed, we have it there as like a security blanket. And to tie in with pet insurance, I would also say, um, you know, educate yourself on pet food and the diet of, you know, your dog, your cat, whatever. The world of pet nutrition is a huge rabbit hole that people can, you know, spend months or years in and information is always changing and then they'll release something and then they disagree with what they released and then it comes back around a couple years later. Um, so I try to stay up to date, but I also spent a lot of time looking into it before we even brought Axel home because I wanted to go into it at least partially educated on what's going to be in his best interest for the first year. And then once we got through the first six months, then I could look at the next year or two, you know, whatever. So either way, I know that pet food is very expensive and after all, we are dealing with inflation and there was a girl, she works at a pet supply store and she made a video the other day on TikTok that said the bag of food that this guy used to buy in 2020 was like $46 or something and now it's gone up to like $65 in just about three years. So inflation's really wild. But if you are able to do it and you have the time to dedicate to looking into it, you know, see, see what you can find and, you know, are you happy with what you're feeding your pets after having educated yourself? Um, 
are there small tweaks that you feel would offer a better quality of life? Like that's obviously a really personal decision, but I thought of that alongside the pet insurance situation because it kind of, it's always an attempt to like encapsulate what's going to give the best quality of life to my pet. I think that that's what most of us strive for. And I think that having those two are good kind of like cornerstones. So next, investing in a good mattress. I cannot tell you guys. So I've talked about this before, but we used to have a standard box spring and a standard mattress. It was really high up off the floor. And when we got Axel, I said, well, I really want our bed to be closer to the floor so that he can jump up on the bed and you know it's it's not a, a risk for him to jump off the bed and it'll make it easier so that that's what we did it was also time to replace that mattress we'd had it for like i don't know seven eight nine years at that point and it was just like really dingy and it was not a good mattress it was super cheap and it was just time to go we ended up investing in a lisa mattress and have been super happy with it for the last what we got Axel, call it maybe six and a half years ago, we got it. It was an investment, but it was completely worth it. When the time comes to replace this one, I would absolutely just buy another Lisa mattress because it's been so wonderful. And after a long day at work or, you know, just stress like day to day stuff, it feels so good to lay on that mattress and, you know, you don't wake up with a sore hip, a sore back. Um, and it's been amazing so and by the way lisa is spelled l-e-e-s-a in case you guys want to look into it okay number three investing in self-care and your health and this is a really broad statement to make but when i think of self-care and my health i think of things like therapy because that hits on mental health um working out, getting a massage, etc. And I also know that some of us aren't maybe in the physical condition to be able to do a bunch of workouts or whatever. So maybe instead of doing a standard workout, you could replace it with going on a short walk around your neighborhood or you know, maybe your version of self-care is spending time in your garden or doing a home improvement project. Whatever it is, if there's money that needs to be spent on a therapist, like for me, that is worth the investment because, you know, mental health is serious and I never really fully understood the impacts of mental health until the last like five to six years. And now that I understand just how vital it is to care for yourself mentally, I fully advocate for spending the time on making your mental health better, helping your physical health, and, you know, if, if it helps your mental health twice a year to go pay for a massage, go do it. I'm here for it um, because, you know, life is tough and we're all going through something. That's just the way that it is. The fourth thing is traveling. And I know that traveling obviously requires money, but traveling doesn't always necessarily, in my mind, traveling doesn't always necessarily have to involve a lot of money because you could do like an hour road trip and depending on where you live, you might live close to a beach. You might live close to mountains or whatever. and even if it's not an overnight trip, sometimes just getting out of your your normal zone that you're in for a day can be a huge reset. So I think that traveling, a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, go to Greece and go to Rome and fly all over the place. Um, travel doesn't require boarding a plane or a train or whatever. You know, they're, they're plenty of places depending on where you live where you can take a quick day trip if you have a you know dog like take your dog or your dogs or whatever and just get out of your normal environment for the day and it's amazing to do a reset that way and the fifth and final item that i have for you guys is investing in high-end appliances or good quality appliances i should say now obviously 
not a homeowner, so I can't really speak to, oh, well, you know, we bought this fridge and this stove and this is how much it was. What I do have experience with is buying something high end like a vacuum. You guys would be surprised. Like something as simple as spending a little bit of extra money on a vacuum makes your life so much easier. And you feel more complete when you're done cleaning because you know that your vacuum actually did its damn job. So I know that that's something very minuscule and simple, but you would be surprised at like how helpful it is to actually have stuff that does its job and doesn't create more work for you. So, um, yeah, I know this was a totally random video and some of y'all are probably like, what in the world is she even talking about? But I figured that it would be a good little one off to break stuff up for now. So that's going to be it. If you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.